today's the industry day on the, on, the, uh, on the seminar, on the conference. So today's presentation is about how do you add value to your business, uh, in particular by doing corrective exercise. Exercise connected to function as opposed to fitness, uh, lactic acid, 50 repetitions type training. I'm going to uh, present it through the eyes of Redcord, which is an organisation that's been in Norway for 18 years now, we're specialists in corrective exercise. Uh, we're bridging the gap between physiotherapy, corrective exercise through personal trainers, and then elite sport through sports performance people, sports scientists, coaches and trainers. So the focus today is connecting that health, wellness and fitness. Now if we look at value creation, and that's really the theme here, well, how do we give value to our customers? Value is a question of what does your customer perceive. It's not what you deliver, it's how the customer perceives it. And it's a big topic, I did some uh, business studies some time ago in London, we talked a lot about value creation for all kinds of things, oil companies, hospitals, la -di -da -di -da. In the fitness industry it's quite interesting. People are so diverse, it's difficult to know what they want. They say that they want a flat stomach, they say that they want to tone up, but that's normally rooted in something very different. A lot of people just want to be cared for, they don't necessarily have to have a flat stomach to tone up. They want somebody to be paying attention to them, and in a positive context within fitness. So that's a good thing, but you almost have to be half psychologist as well as personal trainer physiologist to do a good job. So if you look at this chart here, value creation, I've created a formula, and it's the service delivered minus the expectations of the client, and that gives you your perceived value. It's a very simple formula to remember. If their expectations are much, much higher than what you deliver as a personal trainer, they will walk away. They will not come back. A lot of people join a gym thinking they want one thing, and often it's a dream. They're not prepared to do the work, but they want to buy the membership which represents the desire to do the work. They're not really prepared to do the work, and that's where the magic is. But a lot of people can't do the work unless you start with a corrective exercise program first. Their motor control is so poor, they've been sitting in front of a computer for so long, earning so much money and buying big houses and fast cars, that they've forgotten how to drive their body. They can run big corporates, they can drive a fancy BMW, but they cannot control their own body. And it's a subconscious thing. Most of what happens to me as I walk up and down, as I'm looking at you, is happening subconsciously. I'm not aware of it. There's all kinds of feed forward mechanisms affecting us in our, in our abdomen right now. That keeps me balanced. I don't know what's happening, and it happens in milliseconds. 20 to 40 milliseconds is my reaction time in my core stability when I lift my arm up. You do not have time to say, up with your pelvic floor and in with your belly button. 40 milliseconds is very fast. So, back to value creation. The service delivered is dependent on you as an instructor. On the environment, do you have a nice environment that's consistent with what that patient wants, that, that client wants, that athlete wants? Does it need to be pretty or should it be grungy? Outdoor training is huge in Europe right now. Nobody wants to be indoors. Nobody wants to sit in a machine park. They want to go outside and get cold and miserable and muddy and go home and look at their children and say, <clears throat> I was an animal this afternoon. That's what they want. That's their expectation. So we need to match that. And then the third area is the participant. We are in a service industry. That means no matter how good your service is, if you have a group of five people and three of them are grumpy, miserable, negative, haven't got anything positive to say ever, that is going to affect the rest of your client base. So the service industry is very, very delicate when it comes to that. So you've got three areas there in terms of the service you deliver. You need to look at that because that fits into your equation. The bigger, the better your service delivery, the easier it is for that to outweigh your expectations, the client's expectations. Now those client's expectations are based on information. It depends on what all their friends say at Friday night's dinner party. It depends on what they see in the media. It depends on what they read in medical journals. It depends on what their doctor said, what their physio said, and what the coach said down at the swimming club. All of those people are affecting our client base and influencing how they think, and therefore, what are their expectations of you as a personal trainer? It's a bit of a can of worms. It's not easy to do. 
So finally, you've got the perceived value. Now the easiest way to influence perceived value, regardless of what their expectations are, is to show a result. The proof is in the pudding. You give them a structured assessment tool, you give them a structured program, and you re-evaluate evaluate with the same assessment tool and you show the difference. It's not enough for them to sit in the mirror, uh, stand in front of the mirror, and look at their six pack gleaming. It's not enough. That's short term. Long term, they need to translate your gains that you've given them into their lifestyle. That is corrective exercise. The other thing you need to take into consideration is people's feelings, and feelings are based on lots of things. We won't discuss that now. I'd better talk to my wife about that. She's much better with feelings than I am. Now, if we look at some of the athletes, I'm going top end now, high performance people, extremely high expectations, very, very fragile people. We've got a host of people using the red cord system, which is corrective exercise, which is helping to, them to perform better at Olympic level, national level. Skiers, cyclists, you've got uh, Kate Evans there. Nice to see an Australian on the map. You've got lots of Norwegians, you've got golfers. You've got strong men that lift big things, and it's a bit weird for them to be hanging in ropes. Hang on, where's the weights here? I'm supposed to be lifting up a Volkswagen. I'm supposed to be dragging a train with my teeth. I'm a big, strong guy. Why am I working only with my body weight? Because motor control needs to be trained before you can develop strength. No motor control, no strength. So we've got all the Norwegian strongmen, and they are some of the best in the world, doing preventative exercises and warm-ups in red cord before they lift heavy. The unstable nature of the ropes in three-dimensional space says to the brain and the mechanoreceptors, oh, am I supposed to do something here? And they get warmed up mentally in their motor system before they even begin to lift 300 kilos. So they lift more in each training session and over time that means they ultimately become a lot stronger. On the other hand, if you look at the skiers, Maud, it, she did very, very well at the Vancouver Olympics, the Winter Olympics. She managed to maintain her strength without going up in body weight. For a cross-country skier, that's very important. So she managed to fly through the slopes faster than anybody else because she kept her strength but managed to keep her weights down. If she looks at free weights or machines, she just explodes. She's got testosterone in her lovely lady's body and that makes her grow, which makes her heavy, which makes her strong but slow. Now, let's get back to normal people. We've had a mama group in uh, Scandinavia for a long time. We take people week 12 after having babies. Mothers are distended. The muscle doesn't know where it is in space anymore. The proprioceptive fibers are saying, oh, what am I supposed to do now? I used to be out here and now I'm in here. We take those people and we put them in functional positions and strengthen the muscle. We don't just talk about core, we talk about the entire myofascial sling system from the trunk all the way down. The value for them is they can lift their babies without pain. The value for them is they can uh, socialize with their friends with a glass of wine at the end of the day without slumping in the chair complaining about an old prolapse disc in their back. There's huge value in those people doing specific exercises, not just general exercises. And there are studies to prove it. Spine Magazine 2000-2004. If you look at the design, you see the exercises they chose. The unstable sling exercises had a profound effect. Coupled with good advice. And the lady who constructed the study was very, very clear about that. You must have good advice from your trainer and good exercise prescription. Not just general exercise. If you look at workers, there's a couple of chiropractors on a conference in Florida. They're doing some exercise away from home. And it's very important that we can maintain our routines, particularly if we're getting a bit older, we need to maintain our health. That's adding value. They get their value by being educated in the gym with you. And they get their value by taking that with them and feeling some ownership of it, even when they're on holidays in Florida. 
you look at the gentleman on the right, he's a fireman, he works in Stockholm. The whole fire brigade in Stockholm is now training with Red Bull because they see the value in training as a uniformed athlete. These guys' primary tool is their body. It's not a big red fire truck, it's not jaws of life, it's their body. They're in very unfriendly environments, hot, wet, cold. They need to have a good body to cope with that. So if you look at the value creation areas, we're looking at facility, and that's to do with management and the environment. They obviously need to be up to scratch. They're almost a hygiene factor. Then if you look at experts, that's the personal trainer, the physiotherapist, the chiropractor, the osteopath, the doctor, the coach, the trainer. And lastly, you've got clients. Clients are part of the picture. Don't ignore them when you're questioning what is value in my business. You need to ask that through the eyes of the client. So if we take a look at those in detail, let's look at the industry challenges right now. And this is something that not too many people are paying attention to, but there are alarm bells that are sticking out. From a facility and a management point of view, there is poor client retention. Gyms cannot keep customers. They can't. The statistics in Europe say something to the effect of 30% of people leave within the first three months. Once upon a time, that was fine. They paid their 12-month membership and they never came to the gym. Excellent cash flow at the beginning of the year, but guess what? They didn't come back the year after. Not a good long-term strategy for running a gym. PT attrition, personal trainers do not stick it out. We might have a fairly small proportion of society here, maybe 1% of super fit and healthy people. But there's a lot of personal trainers, and I looked at some statistics not long ago, that are dropping out, and they're asking why. Most people do not last more than three years, and I'm talking about 70% of the PT, personal trainer industry, drop out within three years. What's the answer to that? They're not given permission to use their brains. They're not given their permission to given permission to be professional. They're not looking at exercise as medicine. They're looking at it as a tool to look beautiful. And that is short term. It will not last, it will never last. If you go to the average gym in Europe, you will see machine park, machine park, machine park. I'm sorry if you've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in machines already, but they are on the way out. People are starting to understand that functional training is far more effective outside the gym environment than sitting in a machine doing very square, very linear, no balance exercises. And there are studies coming out of the US now that are showing training in machines will actually decrease your balance and proprioception in real life. They are a catastrophe for athletes. I would not, I worked at Tottenham Hotspurs not so long ago as a physio. I would not let them do sitting exercise in the extension. Why? Not because I don't like it, because it's not relevant. Kicking comes from trunk rotation. It doesn't come from knee extension. But they've all been brainwashed to think, ah, oh, my leg kicks the ball, therefore I should do a kicking exercise in the gym. Their balance went down dramatically. Not good for an elite athlete. Not good for a person who's walking down the street. So functional training's in. And a lot of people talk about functional training, but they misunderstand. Functional training is training that connects what happens in a controlled environment challenging that person to their limits and translating into real life. Functional training is not anything that's not in a machine. A lot of people think functional training is elastic bands and balls and balance cushions. It's not. Just because it's not in a machine does not automatically by default make it functional training. It must connect function to real life. Corrective exercise is in. There is a hybrid gray area between physiotherapy and personal training now, and even insurance companies are starting to understand medical exercise is the way to go to fix non-specific back pain. Don't send them to a physio for traction, send them to a gym for exercise. And finally, people are starting to see a very specific corrective exercise program is far more powerful than just walking in the park. Lastly, as a business owner or an ambassador for a business, you must have a return on investment. You must choose tools and methods that get a result that people are prepared to pay for, but you can't invest so much money that you can't run the business. Otherwise, everybody becomes obsolete. So, this is what happens to society when we have gyms full of machine parks. 
sit there 12 repetitions every day of the week for the rest of your life. People become square. It gets a bit slippery outside. They can't balance. They fall down. They break their hip. They go to the physio. The physio puts them in a machine. Isn't it a funny world we live in? We need to go more functional, more balanced, more complex, more proprioception. Now, look at the picture in the middle. I'm not suggesting these basketballers are like monkeys, but there is a lot in common here. There are muscles that extend all the way from the fingertips down through the muscles in the arm, coracobrachialis, all the way into the scapula on the front, the coracoid process, all the way down to pec minor, which connects to the rib cage, and the rib cage connects to the obliques, and the obliques connect to the hip on the opposite side of the body. How many of you have a textbook of anatomy that gives you pictures of dead people with the arms in the air? Not many. There's a few enlightened people that do. It's probably called anatomy trains. It's one of the best things I've ever made. Most books look like this. I haven't seen many people in real life who do look like that. Maybe down the beach in the summer this week. But it's a sun tanning position. It's not functional. Now look at the guy on the right side. He's going into what we call Superman. He's got an entire myofascial sling connecting his arms to his shoulder, to his trunk, to his opposite hip, and from the other side across as well. He's creating a crucifix across his trunk, and that is lifting him up and giving him what we like to call core stability. But core stability is not just the muscle group in the middle. It's that whole muscle chain that you can see there, all the way from the fingertips down to the opposite hip and down to the knee which is connected to the ground in what we call closed kinetic chain. Most of the things that my four-year-old boy does is closed kinetic chain. He pulls and he pushes. He doesn't lift so much. He doesn't do so much out in space. Most of the things he needs to do to survive are in closed chain. Like a single step is in closed chain. It's happening here. Pulling himself up onto a table. He's moving his body to his hand. He's not moving his hand to his body. Those exercises are critical for corrective and good overall muscle balance. Okay, another industry challenge. What's happening with the experts? Well, we have a little bit of wild west personal training over in Europe. Anybody can go on a week on course and call themselves a personal trainer. It's a little bit better regulated in Australia. We need to up the profile of physical training around the world. It needs to be competence-based, not just knowledge-based. You can't just read a book and think you know how to manage another human being with or without back pain. You have a responsibility to do things professionally, and that means you need knowledge and skill. Systematic training is the way to go here. I have reviewed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of referrals of exercise programs over the years, and I see one number that sticks out. Ten. Why does everybody get, everyone get ten repetitions? Why? There is no physiological basis for it. It is purely because it's a nice round number that doctors and physios and personal trainers can remember. We need to be more clever than that. There's a little bit of a phenomena of hand-holding personal training as well, especially uh, where I come from at the moment. There's a lot of people who walk around with Betty and say, come on now, darling, I'm going to put you on that machine. That's your first exercise. Sit there and lift. Is that okay? 25 kilos? Oh, well, let's try 30 kilos. Excellent. How many should I do? 10. Next machine. So they walk around a machine park holding hands. It's, it's like going to daycare for adults who want to do exercise instead of finger painting. We need to take the industry further than that. We need to become problem-solving personal trainers, problem-solving physiotherapists. We need to look at the body and see, ah, lacking muscle belts. Lower trapezius on the left shoulder. Ah, oh, how are we going to train that? Not just isolated exercises, no. We're going to get her lying back and doing exercises above her head because that's when it affects her and she gets shoulder impingement pain. That's corrective and that's enlightened training. It's fixing problems. It's exercise as medicine. Right, this really annoys me. Inheriting exercises from the past, especially when it comes from celebrities, it really annoys me that Tiger Woods takes an elastic band and does this ten times, possibly three times ten, and it's good for golf. 
know, when you hit the ball in golf, you generate all your force in the first 150 milliseconds up here, and it gets easier on the way down. What does an elastic band do? It's really easy up here, and it gets harder on the way down. And if you look at the scientific studies, that exercise will tell you that it makes people slower. And there are millions of people out there doing it, because we recommend it. Nobody sat back and asked why. The other one is with the, with the medicine ball. It's another one that bothers me. The only thing that is good for is throwing the garbage over the fence into the neighbor's house because your bins are full. <laughs> you get all of your momentum on the way up, and the resistance is on the way up, but that's the follow through in golf. You need to train up here and let everything go down here. You don't want to throw a medicine ball up in the air like that. It's not relevant for golf. But we inherit these things and we don't question why. That is not giving value to your customer. You see, uh, a lot of devices now, you've got TRX has been around for a while, very popular in the US, and you've got uh, Red Cord, which is very popular in Europe. And people think because you're in the same body position, it must be the same exercise. And they're wrong. If you look at the biomechanics of this, they're very, very different. The ball wants to go in lateral movements and forwards and backwards movements. Not good for somebody with back pain. The ropes want to go forwards and backwards in a pendular fashion, much more control. Back again, wrong way. Let's look at this exercise, the crunch on the ball. Everybody thinks it's tough, it's easy, it's a grandmother exercise. It's designed for people who can't pull their trunk up. Eccentrically on the way back, it's, it's, it's a, a difficult exercise, but on the way out, uh, on the way in, it's actually very easy. Why? Because the lever arm between the feet and the trunk gets shorter as you bring the ball towards you. That doesn't happen in the sling system. Then if we look at the Superman, people love to compare this. Oh, I can do that exercise on a ball. Why would I need to do it in ropes? Well, if you look at the mechanics of it again, as you go forwards on a ball, the ball goes under you, which makes the distance shorter, which makes the exercise very easy. Not relevant for a swimmer who needs their maximum strength on the catch phase up here. So, more industry challenges. The demographics are changing. People are getting older. The people with money are getting older. And these are the people who are going to be uh, the bulk of our customers in the future. So we need to change the way we train in order to accommodate them. So, we need to customise the equipment design so that they're getting good treatment. These people are coming like ticking time bombs because they've got old injuries that have disappeared and they're starting to come back again. So we need to treat them that way with corrective exercise, train them that way. There are also safety issues. A lot of older people have got things that you don't know about and they won't tell you about it until it happens in the gym and then it's too late. Their lawyer's ringing you up and saying, hmm, that person wants $10,000 out of you. Please. May not have come to Australia yet, but it's ripe in the US. You have trained the way I train PTs. Most of the people in here are very specific people. They've got their own capabilities. You cannot project that onto your clients because most of your clients are nothing like you. Training the way I train PTs is a little bit irrelevant for an individualized training program. A quick fix PT. There's quite a few personal trainers who like to promise a quick fix. It doesn't happen. The body needs time to change. You can get a spontaneous effect with strength changes and motor control changes, but in the long term, you need to build fresh and new habits into your customer base. That takes up to 12 weeks. Just look at the research. And then the, oh no, a plateau situation. You get to six weeks and nothing's happening all of a sudden. Be prepared for that. The only way to break through that wall is to go correct it. Identify a problem, give them a strategy for correcting it, and then take them into other exercises. That is giving value. So, you need to know why things are working. And if you compare a push-up in ropes on stable, you get approximately 320% more EMG activity in the, uh, uh, in the rotator cuff muscles. You also need to be corrective, not cosmetic. There is no relationship between a six pack and no back pain. None. You need to train for a purpose. The military is training with red cord. A lot of the uh, guys out in the middle of nowhere in Africa and, and the Middle East are training with red cord because they know that it's functional. They don't want big muscles out there. They just want to save their lives. 
So what gets measured gets done. That means you need to pre-test and post-test, and that shows that your intervention or your exercise is having an effect. That's value. You demonstrate it. That's how you get a result. So record represents medical exercise, corrective exercise, and sport. Three areas, and within group training, same sort of thing. Target your customer group and give them the value that they expect, not what you want to give them. Redcord is the common thread between medical, wellness, and elite sport. Try to remember that. Come and visit us at CO8, and if you want to have a tryout, we'd be delighted to do that. We can weekly test you and give you a little bit of a workout. Thanks for listening.